Hello there, this is Mr. Bean from flipmath.com. Today we're going to look at the 2022 AP Calculus free response questions number three. Now this is both the A, B, and the B, C test. They had the same problem on 2022. So uh, let's take a look at this first one. We have a graph, and the first thing you need to check is what is this graph? It is the graph of F prime. That is extremely important to recognize that this is F prime and it's not F. When you don't check that out, then it throws off the whole rest of the problem. You're not going to get these questions right. All right, so the first one, f of 0 and f of 5. Let's find these values. Now, I actually think it's easier to find f of 5 first, so I'm just going to show you that one first, and then I can build off from there how we find f of 0. So f of 5, we know what f of 4 is. f of 4 equals 3. So what I'm going to do is take 3 and add on to that the integral from the x value of 4 until we get to 5. So if I know f of 4 is 3, then I just take 3 plus, and now I'm taking the, the integral of the derivative, and that will give us the accumulation of what's under the graph. Therefore, from 4 to 5, we just need to kind of break this down here. From 4 to 5, we're trying to figure out what is this area. Well, that little tiny piece is just half of one block. See that? So that's just a little 1 half. So this is equivalent to 3 plus a half. So that gives you 3.5 or three and a half, or seven halves, however you like to write that. Now that I've done that one, let me go back and look at f of zero. So hopefully you'll see why I'm now doing f of zero. The same exact way, I'm gonna go from three, start at three, when x equals four, the y value was a three. So if I take three and I add the integral, now I'm gonna go backwards. I'm going to go starting at four, because we have to start where that value was, and let's go backwards to zero. And it will give me the same, it's the same concept prime of x. Now this area is negative, right? That's negative area right there. But because we're going this direction from 4 to 0, you're going from 4 to 0, it's actually going to end up being positive. So it's still going to be 3 plus. Since we are 4 to 0, this is negative. The area is negative. Therefore, it's still all positive. I know that's a little confusing. So then you just have to do the area of a circle is pi r squared. So it's pi r squared all over 2 because it's a semicircle, it's half of a circle. And then what's the radius of this thing? The radius is from 2 to 4, that radius is 2. So then that's going to equal 3 plus 2 pi. And if you're wondering which lesson this one is, that is going to be lesson 6.1. If you look at flipmath.com, lesson 6.1, which is exploring accumulation of change right there. All right, let's do part B. Part B, we're gonna find the x coordinates of all points of inflection for the graph between zero and seven, but we want the points of inflection of the graph of f, not of f prime. So you just have to be very careful about that. So we wanna figure out when is f prime, you could think of this as two ways. You could think of this as f prime, when does f prime have relative extrema? Or you could think of it as when the second derivative of f changes sign from either positive to negative or negative to positive. That's what we're looking for in order to, to uh, and that's going to be our justification. So in order to find that, remember this is f prime. So f prime has relative extrema. Well, that one's pretty easy. It's going to have a relative extrema right there, and it's got a relative extrema right there at x equals 2 and x equals 6. Now, if you took the derivative of f prime, you would then get when the second derivative of f, or in other words, when the slope of f prime is changing. See here the slope is negative, now the slope is positive. Here the slope is positive, then the slope is negative. It's okay that it's a corner, it can still be a point of inflection. So we're just, because we're just talking about when does it change signs. Okay, so it's, so we can say at those two points, so we've got points of inflection, if I knew how to spell here, points of inflection at x equals 2 and x equals 6, because and then I tend to always go with the second derivative because I equate points of inflection with the second derivative because f double prime changes sign at those points. And another justification you could say, so instead of saying because f second derivative of f changes sign at those points, you could say because f prime has relative extrema at those points. That would be another justification that you could say at that. But so it's x equals 2 and x equals 6 were the two points. Now, what is the lesson you could look at to get better at this? Well, 5.6. 5.6 is the lesson on uh, points of inflection, of finding points of inflection. And then 6.5 is the lesson on the behavior of accumulation functions. So this behavior of accumulation functions is the, is the tricky one. 
All right, let's go on to part C. Part C, now they introduce a new function. So we've got this function g, and g is going to be defined by f of x minus x. So on what intervals, if any, is g decreasing for uh, the interval 0 to 7? So let's show the analysis. So how do we know when it's decreasing? A function decreases if its derivative is negative. So let's take a look at g prime of x. g prime of x is just the derivative of these two pieces, so that's going to be f prime minus 1. So when does this thing, is that negative? Well, let's f first figure out when does it equal 0. If we figure out when that equals 0, that happens when f prime of x is equal to 1. So when does f prime of x equal 1? If I just kind of draw a line across here, that might help a little bit. So what I'm looking for is anything that's underneath this line. So at f prime, if f prime of 1 equals 1, then anything underneath that would cause g prime to be negative. So in other words, I ignore anything above it and I only care about what's below it. So in this case, what part of that? It goes from there, there, it's all along this part right here, if I could trace. So that's the part I'm talking about. So let's go back to my answer. Let's say g is decreasing on the interval 0 to 5 because, and then this is where you say because g prime of x is negative, or you could say is less than zero. And there's my justification. And the lessons on this one, if you needed help with, to try and learn this stuff, this is on 5.3 as well as 6.5. 6.5 is accumulation functions, so kind of all the rest of this is dealing with a lot of 6.5 for this uh, free response problem, but the 5.3 is dealing with on an interval of, uh, of either decreasing or increasing. Okay, let's do our last part for number three. And that is now we're going to find an absolute minimum value on the interval 0 to 7. But it's an absolute minimum of what? It's an absolute minimum of g. So we've got to remember, what was g again? There's my g. And so we have already discovered one of the, uh, the, the critical points. In fact, here's what I would do. I would probably use the candidates test. Yeah, I'm going to use candidates test. And therefore, I've got the endpoints. So the candidates test will give me... I'm going to write that over here so you see what I'm doing, talking about. So the candidates test is going to be the, the uh, end points and the critical points. So what was my critical point? Well, if I go back up to part C, I already found when the derivative equals 0. It equals 0 when f prime equals 1, which was right here. All right? So that's an x equals 5. So I know I have a critical point, critical point at x equals 5 from the last problem. So if the critical point's at x equals 5, now my candidates are... Oh, well, I guess technically at x equals 7 too, right? Yeah, because that's where it also equals 1 there. See, it crosses the line right there. So I guess we could do that. But I didn't really worry about that one because I also know that 7 is an endpoint. So I've got my candidates test here. I'm going to do my table and then g of x. So my, I have 0 as an endpoint. So what happens? What is g of x? Well, that's going to be f of 0 plus 0 right? f of x minus x, so f of 0 plus 0. What was f of 0? I did that in part A. So you just take your answer from part A, and here's the nice thing. If you got the wrong answer for part A, you can still get points on this problem here. You just use whatever your answer was up here. All right, so f of 0 was, f of 0 was 3 plus 2 pi. So I'm going to say that this is then equal to 3 plus 2 pi plus 0. So there's my answer there. All right, now let's do 5. So 5 is going to be f of 5 plus 5, which in this case is, what was f of 5? I already figured that one out, right? f of 5 is 3.5. So I figured that one out part A. So it's going to be 3.5. Oh, I put plus. Oh my goodness. Sorry, 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 sorry. Whoops. Not plus, not plus. Big mistake. Minus, minus, some of you caught that and you're, sorry about that, f of x minus x. So f of, I, f of 5 minus 5. So I have 3.5 minus 5 which would then equal negative 1.5. All right, and then the last one is 7. So now I need f of 7 minus 7. But now the problem is I don't know what f of 7 is. So in order to figure out what f of 7 is, I have to do another one of those cool problems, which is f of 7 is going to equal f of 4 plus the integral from 4 to 7 of f of f prime of x. All right, so let's figure out what that is. So f of 4 is 3, so that's just my 3 plus. And then I need to know the area of all of the area from 4 to 7. So just think of the geometric shapes here. You have, uh, if I split this up, so this is 
a square of one, two, three, four, cut in half, so that's two, that's one, and that's a half right there, that little thing right there. So that's three and a half, so plus 3.5. So that added together then would be 6.5. So I have 6.5 minus, so that's f of seven is 6.5, minus seven equals negative 0 0.5. So then it goes back, what was the absolute minimum? Based on the candidates test, I have an absolute minimum, absolute min of negative 1.5 at x equals 5 based on the candidates test. And the candidates test was less than 5.5. If you need to review that one, you can look on FlipMath. We've got the 5.5 right down there. Uh, there it is. Candidates test to determine absolute value global extrema. All right, hopefully that was helpful. This is Mr. Beans signing off.